Hello, gym owners. I'm Matthew Becker with Gym Lawyers PLLC. And before we get into the topic of this video, let me just remind you that this is all meant for educational purposes only. And you cannot take it specifically as legal advice. If you have a legal situation that you need help with, you can reach out to us directly at gymlawyers.com. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about why you need to follow legal formalities. In this case, we're talking specifically about forming corporations. Now, years ago, we used to fight with gym owners a lot about why they needed to form a corporation, as opposed to just operating a business as a sole proprietorship. However, as opening your own business becomes more and more popular, as people keep leaving their nine to five jobs in hope of finding their love and running their own business, Forming that corporation is becoming no big deal. Oftentimes, it can be very automated. There's forms on Secretary of State websites that you can use in order to file an LLC relatively easily. But what these forms often don't discuss are some of the other legal formalities that really need to be followed when you're forming a corporation. Now our struggle is not necessarily convincing people to form the corporation, it's convincing them and educating them about everything else that needs to be done to do so properly. One primary example of that is an operating agreement. Now, oftentimes, when we're trying to illustrate some of these more complex legal or maybe nuanced legal issues, it helps if we do so through an example. And oftentimes, we'll pick an example that really illustrates our point. But let me assure you, these actually happen. So recently, we, had, we were contacted by a gym owner who wanted to buy into a corporation, an existing corporation. He didn't want to buy the business. He wanted to buy into it. He wanted to be added as a member or a partner in this LLC, a limited liability corporation, an LLC. And this should have been a relatively easy process. Buying into a corporation is pretty easy. You find the operating agreement, you look at what the process and the operating agreement says, and you follow that process. But of course, it wasn't that easy. Why? Because the company that he was trying to buy into didn't have an operating agreement. It was owned by a single person. So of course, why does that single person need an operating agreement? What he says goes for his business. And the reason that you need an operating agreement is because it essentially tells you, partners, the world, courts of law, creditors, anybody who's interested in the corporation, what has to be done in order for the corporation to do something. And then if there's a problem, we can all turn back to that operating agreement to see what should happen. Once again, this should have been a relatively easy fix. You can go back in the past or whatever, and you can write an operating agreement now that will apply to a business that already exists. But of course, it couldn't be that easy. Because as we kept digging, we soon discovered that this current owner of the LLC didn't actually start the LLC. He bought it from somebody else. So we start looking for the documents. We find no previous operating agreement no resolution to buy or sell the business, <clears throat> no purchase agreement ever existed. And this created a problem because now we have a really hard time demonstrating legally who actually owns the business. Here, it may have also been nice and easy just to check the Secretary of State's website to see who was registered as the owner of the business. But nobody ever followed that legal process either, and it had never been updated from the original person who created the LLC. And so while a lot of this seems like it's an overly burdensome, legally formal process that you may not actually have to follow, examples like this illustrate that it is incredibly important. It ended up costing everybody a lot of money in order to fix all of this. And so when gym consulting companies like Two Brain Business 
and Chris Cooper say things like, acting now will save you between $800 and $1,000 in legal fees in the future. These are the sorts of things that he's talking about. If you already own a business, but you haven't followed the legal formal process of doing things like creating an operating agreement, filing with your secretary of state, you don't even know what articles or letters of resolution are. These are things that you can do now to save you a whole lot of money in the future. That's what we're here to help with. Guys, reach out to us if you have any questions. We're here to help at gymlawyers.com.